Hey guys, um, I've been asked to explain how you all can use Excel um, to solve for some of these what I would kind of consider to be backwards problems where you know the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution but what you're actually trying to solve for is you're trying to solve for the x value or the value that separates the curve into two pieces of the probability puzzle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do number 23 on page 213 for you. It tells me I have a normal distribution with a mean of 15, a standard deviation of 4. It wants me to determine the value below which 95% of the observations will occur. So I'm looking for the point on the curve that separates the bottom 95% from the top 95%. What you need to remember about this Excel command is it will always, always solve for the area below a given probability. So I'm going to come up here to my little FX bar and where it says insert function and I'm going to double click. And it's going to let me search for a function and I'm going to type in the command N-O-R-M-I-N-V and I'm going to say go and it finds it for me right here and what it tells me is it returns the inverse and the normal cumulative distribution for the specified mean and standard deviation which sounds very impressive doesn't it I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to come over here and I think it'll let me there we go it's going to hopefully let me put my answer right there. Um, probability. Oh, I want to know what proportion falls below 95%. So that's always going to be your probability. Um, the proportion that falls below 50% would be 0.5. Area that blow, falls below 14%, 0.14. This problem just simply asks for the value below which 95 percent. The mean is given in the problem as 50. The standard deviation is given as 4. So once I have put all of those numbers in, you'll see Excel goes ahead and automatically calcul calculates it for me. It's 56.57 carried out to a bunch of decimal places. Um, but I can simply hit OK, and what will happen is, whoops, I think it's way over here, is it will place my answer into a cell. And it just happened to put it way over here, but you'll see it's 56.5794, which would basically round up probably to 56.58. I think the book tells you 57.60 which is fine. You're never going to be counted off for, for being, you can tell that rounding is kind of an issue here. So um, let me do another one for you real quick. I'm going to look at number 25. Assume that the mean hourly cost to operate a commercial airplane is normally distributed with a mean of $2,100 per hour, standard deviation of 250. What is the operating cost for the lowest 3% of the aircraft. The lowest 3% of the aircraft. So what I'm looking for is the very bottom, right, the very bottom of the distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and use the, um, use Excel to do this. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way that I did the other one. So I'm going to go up here to my function, see how it remembers where I was last. So if I'm doing two of these in the row, I could just double click on that. And what it wants, it wants the probability of the lowest 3%. So I have to put that into a decimal, so it's 0 0.03. The problem tells me that the mean or average for um, these hourly costs is $2,100. Also tells me that the standard deviation is $250. So I'm going to simply click OK. What it gives me is $1,629.80.
probably rounded up to sixteen hundred and thirty cents, sixteen hundred and thirty dollars um, in your textbook. But either answer would be correct. And what that, what Excel has just told me, is that the point on the curve that separates the top ninety-seven percent of the data from the bottom three percent is located at 1,629.8 and we just know it's dollars because that's what the problem asked the question in. So you can go through and solve all of these this way. Um, I want to show you how to do a backwards solution which is like number 24. All right, I just told you that this function in Excel always solves for the area that's below a given or represents what's below a certain percentage of the curve. Well, look at number 24. It tells me the normal distribution has a mean of 80, standard deviation of 14, nothing new or exciting there, but it wants to know the value above which 80% of the values will occur. Well, you all know enough about probability now to know if 80% of the values fall above, then 20% have to fall below, don't they? It's that complement. You know that the total area under the curve is 1, so if 80% are above, then 20% are below. And because Excel always solves for the lower end of the curve, all we have to do now in order to solve a quote unquote backwards one is go back up, go into insert function, go N O R M I N V, say go, shows up right here. We say OK, except now the probability is the lower half, which is 1 minus 0.80, which gives me 0 0.20. The mean in the problem is given as 80. Whoops, that's 60. Uh, the standard deviation is given as 14. I'm simply going to hit OK, and it's going to tell me that 68.2173 is the value above which 80% of the values will occur because it's also the value below which 20% of the values will occur. Let me do one more like that just to make sure you got it. All right, so what I've given you here is I've just given you some professor math, some made up numbers. Say that we have a mean, a distribution with a mean of 13, a standard deviation of 2, and I ask you what number represents the values above 12% in this curve. So in other words, I want to now solve for above, right, above 12%. I'm going to go back up to my function. I'm going to hit my little function thing. I'm simply going to select it because I've done a bunch of these in a row, so I don't need to type it in again. I'm just going to pick it. I'm going to say OK. And here the mean I just gave you was 13. Standard deviation was 2. Only thing that you have to do anything with is the probability. Because remember, Excel is always going to solve for the bottom half of the curve. So I'm simply going to say what area is below the 12. So I'm going to take 1 minus 0.12 equals 0.88. So I'm going to say 0.88, I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to be able to tell you that for a distribution with a mean of 13, standard deviation of 2, 15.35 is the location in the curve above which 12% of the data falls. Remember, you can solve these by hand, as he shows you on page um, 212, using the guts, so to speak, of the normal curve table, or you can just jump over here to Excel and do them this way. 
Hope this helps. If you need more, uh, let me know. Thanks.